Howdy and welcome to the shop. This is Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is episode number 53 of my This and That series. I think I've got some really interesting things to show you. Let's start with this box, ship priority, and I, I believe it was certified and double packed because this thing is so valuable from a man I never met before. It's a gift from James Restino in. New York. I had to sign for the package. It cost almost $25 for him to send. This is a model of a Bridgeport milling machine. It's approximately 10 inches high, made of aluminum. And Jim made about eight of these several years back and wanted me to have one. I will treasure this always. This is so great that this will be featured in a future video, a standalone video. It is so precision. The little uh, cranks work. The table moves in three different axes. The head will tilt. The ram will move in and out. It's just a beautiful model. I'm so pleased to have it. And thank you, Jim, for that. And watch for the upcoming video. And while I'm on the subject of models, there is a video that I want you to watch on this triple expansion marine engine built by Craig Stevens. And he was a student of my father's. This is my father here. And I talked to Craig for about a half hour on the phone in regards to this. He had just finished this. He has made several other models that are astounding. And you will find this video under the name Bridget Trap. I'll put a link for that uh, so that you can watch that. And one of his other videos. Very, very interesting man and quite a model maker and craftsman and cabinet maker in California. This is the Gothic Beam engine, also by Craig Stevens. And there's a video of that because you're watching it. This he made several years ago. Just an amazing model. And uh, it takes several years to make one of these. So check that out as well. I'll put the link in the description. Thank you, Craig, for making these beautiful models. This is a project book. And I think I had this at high school. There were uh, several versions of this. This is book three. But anyway, I bought this at a flea market for two bucks or something. But in here I found a project that I would like to do. As a matter of fact, I am going to do it. And here it is. There are three pages of uh, blueprints. And uh, my friend Ted from Wisconsin, the retired dentist, made the patterns for me. I'm going to show you that in just a second. And this project will be... Uh, in a video, all in perhaps a couple months when the weather warms up and I can get into the foundry. So let's take a look at the patterns. This is a picture of Ted and I in Florida at the meet and greet at the Flywheelers, Florida Flywheelers uh, grounds. It was really a neat event, but uh, Ted came all the way from Wisconsin to be at the event and uh, brought those patterns to me. So thank you so much for that, Ted. And here are the foundry patterns, 3D printed. You know, the white color just doesn't show up very well at all, but that's the front jaw. There's a little pocket there for that sliding device. I forgot what you call it. That would be an option. And here's the back jaw. And this is about five inches. So that will be a fun project to cast and then to machine. Ted already machined one. He has a little foundry up there. Matter of fact, I told him, go ahead and make the video. You've done three-fourths of the work already. Thank you, Ted. While I was at the Florida Flywheelers, I bought really only one thing. They had a tremendous flea market there. So big you had to be in a golf cart. So I did ride around with Jim Bollinger. Thank you, Jim, in his uh, Kawasaki mule to cover things. But we did, uh, or I did discover and purchase uh, a nice stare at depth micrometer with three rods. This was only $20. Oh no, $15. I was amazed. He had a whole box of these. I wish I would have bought some more of them. They also had one that is a half. 
on the you know half of a base. I wish I would have bought that one, maybe instead of this one. And while we were in the flea market, ran into Adam Booth and Keith Rucker and uh, Mr. Wiggins of the Backyard Machine Shop. So it was good to see all those guys. And right after this clip here, I'm going to put a few pictures of those guys. I did not take a whole lot of pictures. I did not take my video camera along. Thank you to Alex AC out of Pennsylvania for sending me this spill-proof oil can made of PVC. Even came with a brush, a little bit larger than the typical size that I've been using. As a matter of fact, it looks like it would hold a quart, although you wouldn't put quite that much in there. You'd probably put a pint in about halfway, but pretty much off the shelf. Benton, Pennsylvania. So. Thank you for that. Some time ago in a video I showed this Empire hot air engine and of all things Myford Boy, his real name is David, over in England is making one of these from scratch. He made all the patterns. Uh, he's not quite done but he has some of the earlier videos on this so, uh, so check that out. I'll put a link down there for that as well. That's Myford Boy. So he's doing a great job on it. He's quite a model maker as well. A lot of information on models in this issue. When I was out in California last summer at the Bash, Lance Boltsley was there. An interesting guy. He's also a veterinarian. And he said he would send me some of these Norton's precision ground stones. And he did. And they're just beautifully made. You've seen some of the other creators with these also. Fine and coarse. These are Norton stones that are ground perfectly flat and true. So thank you so much for that, Lance. And you people will see these in uh, future videos. And he included an instruction sheet. I love his logo. LB. I'm back to model making now. John Nathan, who is a patent attorney and a model maker and just a, a good guy, sent me pictures of a rectilinear engine that he recently made. There's one view of it. There's another one along with his name. And notice that he mentions the patent, which goes way back to the 1840s. It's a British patent, and I'll show you that, but the pictures aren't very good. rectilinear. And there's the video and that's at Cabin Fever in 2017. These are the original patent drawings. I know they don't show up very well. And that's from 1843 in England. Converting rectilinear into rotary. Look at how they spell rotary and into uh, rectilinear motion. By the way, I asked uh, Myford Boy if I had an accent. You know, he's from England. He said, you sure do. Andrew Camarda is one of my favorite YouTube creators. He's a young guy out of upstate New York. He watches video on building a shipping container castle. He does a lot of construction work and he's not a machinist, but just very, very great uh, photography and interesting subjects. And he is so dedicated. So check him out. I received a gift from Stanley Dyer from Springfield, Missouri, all boxed up here. And what this is, is a uh, device, they call it the Yellow Hornet to sharpen lawnmower blades. So your four inch grinder slides into here. I'll be making a video on this later when the weather breaks. But thank you Stanley for this. It's 
all powder coated, very, very heavy item. And he has a website. There it is. And that's what it looks like when it's set up for sharpening the blade with the 4 inch grinder. I've talked about Herky Hardware in downtown LaSalle, Illinois many times. I was in that store from the time I was probably six years old on up. Notice the name Herky up here. Finally went out of business after about a hundred years and the pickers were there. And you may have watched that recent episode. If not, go back and watch it because the entire hour was devoted to it. And upstairs in the building here, even though they had a closeout sale and there was nothing left on the main floor, the upstairs was packed with new old stock. So it's very interesting. When I started working as a machinist, I was in graduate school, I bought a couple tools. I, did, I had very little money, but I went to Herkes and there's the original box for this square head. And the blade came in a sleeve, a yellow sleeve. I've lost that, but this is still in perfect condition and is one of my favorite squares. Therefore, when I went into Herkes, and this is uh, <laughs> mentioned in another video, I went right to the cabinet where they kept all the brown and sharp, and it was packed full of these boxes. And I went to look at it, and I was scolded not to look in there, and that was not for sale. And I told her. I was kind of mad. I said, well, the window says everything for sale. So they lied, and I was kind of mad about that. And then these were either sold, that whole cabinet was either sold on uh, eBay or put upstairs, but I saw no evidence of it when I watched that recent episode of The Pickers. Let's take a look at a couple of my videos. In The Pickers show, they talked a little bit about the history, but they only mentioned briefly Glenn Herkey, who was the one I knew, he'd be dead now, and his sister. There was a photo of them, but no mention, and the photo was on there only that long. I was disappointed because, you know, they, they spent 50 years there, and they were just thrown away like they were nothing and not even mentioned. Here's a clip of the closing out sale. I don't think I took any video in the store. And I bought some bandsaw blades for almost nothing that'll fit a Delta saw. So that uh, video, if you want to watch it, is this and that number 42. Now here's a clip in my this and that number 50. And this was a rather recent uh, video, but that's the article in the paper when the pickers were actually there at the store. Notice that the store is totally empty there. But right behind them is where they sold pocket knives and things like that. So that was an old store where they weren't affiliated with Ace or True Value or anything like that. It was just locally owned and they had a lot of unusual and rare things. And you can see they threw nothing away. Mr. Bob Park sent me a couple pictures of a steam engine model he would like to identify. It's 20 inches long, but that's a wooden plinth, and it has a 2-inch bore. And we're trying to determine if it's a homemade model or perhaps came off a peanut machine or a, a sewing machine or something like that. Here's another picture. And it has a 2 and a quarter inch stroke. It's a really neat engine. He was thinking about donating it to Jay Leno, of all people. Wouldn't that be awesome? I often mention my brother Jan Peterson, who uh, I dearly loved and passed away about six months ago. But when I got home from the Florida Flywheelers, there was a letter in the mail. I had a whole stack of mail. Holy miracle. It took my wife hours to go through it. But uh, a whole in the, the stack of letters, there was a letter from the uh, community college where my brother taught for many years and it was just an amazing letter uh, to me but they were announcing that a neighbor, I can't mention the name because it's anonymous, the neighbor that lived next to us in uh, the city of Peru 
and they were rather wealthy family, business owners, and uh, good friends of our family and especially of my brother. But this man, who was about 60 now, he was a little boy, of course, uh, when I was a teenager, donated $25,000, I said 25000 to the community college in my brother's name in the form of a scholarship for vocational or technical education. So I was really moved and touched by that. And there will be a ceremony, I think, later this summer. And uh, I, they invited me to that, so I'll be going to that. So I just wanted to, to tell you that because that, that letter meant an awful lot to me. Be sure and watch this video all the way to the end because I'm going to have a bunch of still pictures on there as well. And I'm still plugging away on this great divinity fudge made for me by my buddy Don Snyder down in the red stick. That's Baton Rouge. There's nothing like divinity fudge in case you've never had any. Loaded with southern pecans. Thanks for watching.